This is Dr. Dennis Bill Felt of the Christ School of Theology. You're watching a course called uh, Faith, Knowledge, and Reason. And of course, this course deals with the philosophical presuppositions of theology. And we're talking right now about Descartes and the important contributions he made to philosophy, particularly metaphysics. And of course, we're going to see now how this affects uh, the theological project. Last time we uh, arrived at the Indubitum, cogito ergo sum, I think, therefore I am. And so he has a clear and distinct apprehension of his own existence. This is something he cannot be wrong about. Okay. Now, what does it say about the senses? Uh, of course, we've seen that uh, he has to withdraw within himself to find these metaphysical truths. He, they're connected to the innate structure uh, of our minds and also uh, to the way in which we think. Uh, and uh, he believes, of course, that metaphysics is grounded not in sense perception, but in some deep intellectual uh, perception, if you will, apprehension, and uh, 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 deep thinking, if you will, <laughs> okay? Um, but his attitude towards the senses, are, they're not entirely negative, right? He says that, you know, the senses do inform us about the condition of the body uh, of which the mind forms a body-mind composite. He believes that the human being is a composite of body and mind, two different kinds of substances. We'll talk about that. So, I mean, the senses are important in that they report to us uh, that which is of concern to the body. Uh, but, of course, the senses are also important in establishing uh, particular mechanical truths. I mean, uh, you're going to find out how the, uh, the mechanics of celestial, uh, celestial uh, orbits, you're going to find that out by consulting the senses. Right? And Kepler had to. We talked last time about his uh, three laws. So senses are important in establishing the particular uh, me mechanical truths. However, the fundamental principles of physics cannot be established by the senses, according to Descartes. And some of you are saying, well, but what are the fundamental uh, principles of physics? Well, here you go to a metaphysical truth. Fundamental principle of physics is that the, esser, the essence of matter is extension. Hold on to that one. Matter has an essence. What is it to be ex extended in space? Metaphysics, according to Descartes, tells us what properties bodies can have. The senses then go on to tell us which ones they do, in fact, have. So metaphysics is dealing with the deeper uh, scheme, if you will, uh, the, the, the metaphysical contour of the world that is open to different uh, possibilities depending upon what the sense perception, our sense perceptions give us. But uh, uh, we do not discover that the essence of matter is extension uh, by uh, going out and examining frogs, for instance. Okay, now we're getting into his third meditation. There are six of them. Oh, there we go. Uh, he declares, I now seem to be able to lay it down as a general rule that whatever I perceive very clearly and distinctly is true. Right? When he uh, arrived at the I am, he had a clear and distinct uh, apprehension that he is, and so now he's going to apply this clear clarity and distinctness as a mark by which to adjudicate what other things are true, as a yardstick, a must stop. But how do we know if something is clear and distinct, one can ask. Well, uh, he claims that we can know that something is clear and distinct if we cannot doubt it. Now, with Descartes, doubt has to do with the will. The will is always uh, in uh, service, if you will, of the intellect. So if one is convicted by the intellect, one, one's will goes along with it. One, 
if one cannot doubt it, if one cannot, through willpower, doubt it, then the thing is clear and distinct, and it is true, if that makes sense to you. So, uh, he says, could one have been created to be mistaken, even if one clearly and distinctly apprehends something, and one's will is convicted? So now that's a deeper question. Is it still possible, even though you can't doubt it, is it still at least logically possible uh, that uh, one is still mistaken? And here now Descartes must ask the question of whether there is a God. You know, he, he got into this epistemic stew, and this epistemological morass with the evil genius uh, uh, postulate, right? So now we've moved through to the third meditation. We're talking about the criteria of clarity and, and distinctness. And this gets us into the question of God, or it, he wants it to get into that uh, question. So is there a God? And if there is a God, can he be a deceiver? If there's a God and he can't be a deceiver, then the evil genius couldn't systematically uh, deceive us, and we couldn't possibly even be wrong about the things we can't, we don't think we could possibly be wrong about. So now he's going to set forth an argument for the existence of God that is based upon a clear and distinct apprehension of a particular idea that we have. We have an idea, according to Descartes, of an infinite being. We have an idea of perfection. Now, this is a very famous argument for the existence of God. And uh, don't be misled, this is not the ontological argument for the existence of God. He uses that in the fifth uh, uh, meditation. He's got a different argument here. He says, I know that I exist, and as an existing being, I have this idea of an infinite being. Okay. Now, what causes this idea of an infinite being? Now, he takes it as a matter of uh, metaphysical certitude that there must, there must be as least as much reality in the cause of a thing as in the effect of a thing. Now, hold on to your boots here, uh, because, of course, this is not very clear. What does it mean to say that there must be at least as much reality in the cause of a thing as in its effect? Well, uh, Descartes takes a particular view on this. He says that if the effect we're talking about is the idea of an infinite being, the cause which must present as least as much reality as the idea of an infinite being cannot merely be another idea, nor can it be me, because those things don't have as much reality as the idea of an infinite being. My mind does not have as much reality as the idea of infinity. The only cause possible for the idea of perfection, the only thing with as much reality as this idea of perfection, is perfection itself, is God itself. Only God can cause the idea of an infinite being in us. Now, if you're squirming in your chairs at this point, you're in good company. Generations of college students have squirmed in their chairs at that particular point. We'll be right back uh, to talk more about this argument. I'm Dr. Dennis Bielfeld of the Christ School of Theology.